What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about two trades that I made today on the 19th of March in 2019, as well as taking a deeper look into two stocks that I'm looking to swing trade here in the month of March and heading off into the month of April in 2019, one of those two stocks being one one that I'm currently in with a small position and the other one is one that I want to build a position here uh, you know in over these next couple of days here in March and we're also going to be talking about a couple of other stocks and ETFs that did very well today in this video as well so stay tuned for all of that but before we do get into the topic of today's video all I ask for you guys to do to help support the channel if you find value in these videos and you enjoy and find value in this video feel free to just hit that like button guys it really does support the channel and supports me in general and if you're not part of our two communities that are linked down below in the description box one of those being the free facebook group and the other one being the free discord group chat i highly advise you guys get in there you're going to find a ton a ton of value talking to traders and other investors throughout the entire day in that discord chat that discord chat is 100 a great resource for anybody out there that wants to be a part of a community so let's just jump into it now guys let's talk about what ended up happening today you know in the overall markets we can see the spx the s p 500 was on a roller coaster ride today it was up about 20 points at one point we went down into the red but we ended up closing the day down about 37 cents down about 0.01 percent so a minuscule red day here for the S&P 500, the Dow Jones ended up closing the day down about 26 points here, down about 0.1%, so a very small red day there for the Dow Jones as well. And the NASDAQ Composite, guys, it ended up closing off the day. I don't know if it ended up closing off the day up 18 points. Let's just make sure because this is the future here. But it looks like we ended up closing the day roughly at about 73, 70-ish in terms of uh, the NASDAQ. And that's about nine points lower from where we are now. So it's safe to say the NASDAQ ended up closing the day up about nine points, give or take about 0.1 to 0.2% on the day. So the NASDAQ ended up closing the the day on a very minimal green note based on what I'm seeing here. The, da the Dow ended up closing the day on a very small red note and again the SPX on a very minuscule red day here at the close of the market. And why was I saying it was a roller coaster ride today? Well, we opened up on the gap up here to about 28.45 ended up hitting highs of about 28.52 and then we ended up tanking 30 points a 30 point swing here in the SPX towards the end of the market which is about a 1% move to the downside here in the SPX now let's just go over some technicals here I'm going to redraw the support level and resistance levels that we've been looking at here on the SPX over the past couple of trading weeks so we can get a better understanding of where we're potentially moving here in terms terms of the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. So we all know at this point, right, the next resistance that we're facing in the SPX is going to be at around 2870. And 2870 is a support level that we were at a couple of months back in the beginning of uh, September in 2018 when we were running up very nicely, right? We hit that all-time high. Then we ended up dumping below the 2870 level, making that a new resistance. And we've actually successfully gotten out of the other two resistances set from the middle of October and another one from... Uh, the beginning of December here in 2018 when the markets took a big hit. We obviously took a big hit. We all know that by now. And that led us really making those levels as new resistance points. And then here over the past couple of days, guys, we broke out of those levels. And now we're looking to hold this new level here at about 2820 to 2830 as a new support level. And technically speaking, as of right now, just judging off this longer term chart, we're doing that successfully, right? Meaning that the uptrend is still intact. The upwards move is really still there with no honest downsides, uh, downside uh, potential here based off of 
the technicals. Now, let's just take a look at a closer term chart here so we can get a better understanding of what I'm seeing on the SPX. And we can take a look here on this five day, five minute, because this is actually what I was watching earlier on in the day when I was on my computer during this time. So during this time, I was telling myself, okay, we're still maintaining the uptrend. We saw this pullback and on this pullback, I was waiting to see if we were going to hold that 50 SMA as a support, which has been a support here over the past couple of trading days based on this five day, five minute. But we see that 1% swing to the downside actually brought us out of that uh, support here. It brought us below the support, breaking that support from over the past couple of days, which could be a little bit of a worrisome sign here in terms of the SPX. But again, it's super important to look at many time frames. And if we take a look at the longer time frame, we're still maintaining the support at about 2820 to 2830. And we can see we maintained the support from yesterday's lows, which is a good sign that we're either consolidating here or we're looking to push back up, right? Remember in yesterday's video, I was talking about a couple of different scenarios, right? And on Sunday's video and Friday's video as well, I was talking about a couple of different scenarios that we're going to see this week. The one scenario was that we were going to have a day or two of green, which it's looking like happened, right? We had a day of green yesterday. We almost had another day of green today, but we technically did because we did push to higher highs, although we didn't end up closing the day green. So I guess you can say we had two days of upwards momentum and from there I talked about in those previous videos how we could potentially see some consolidation days before either heading up to the next resistance at about 2870 or seeing a retracement very similar to what we saw back here a couple of weeks ago right we notice here we were pushing up a couple of days a couple of days of green very similar to what we're seeing here then we ended up flatlining plateauing for a couple of days finding that new resistance then we ended up selling off. So what I'm seeing here on the five day, five minute, this could be the start of a consolidation phase on top of this new support, right? We noticed the bounce here, here. So what tomorrow, uh, what I'm going to be watching for tomorrow, guys, is exactly that, right? Are we going to maintain this level here to A, push to the upside or B, push to the downside or C, are we just going to maintain this level and have a couple of flat days in the market? These are all things that could potentially happen and what I'm waiting for in terms of tomorrow. So the SPX guys, just take a look and see, are we going to consolidate here for the sell off for the push up or are we just going to maintain this level for a day or two before deciding which direction we're going to go? That's what I'm seeing right now in the SPX. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys are seeing seeing the Dow Jones industrial average here very similar to the SPX over the past couple of weeks we've been plowing through those resistance levels and now we're trending on top of this old resistance which we broke above a couple of days of trading ago right we all know this level at about 25,800 and we're maintaining this level as a new support level and that is still intact because today we ended up closing the day above that support level right so everything is looking like we're still maintaining the uptrend. There's no screaming technical signs that we're selling off in the Dow Jones, but I want to see you know, is something similar going to happen to what I said with the SPX? Are we going to hold here for a couple of days before selling off? Are we going to hold here and then pump up to the 26200 level, which has been of resistance two previous times here in the past? What are we going to end up doing here, guys? This is what I'm watching. And honestly, the level we're on right now is super important because let's say we break to the downside. That's going to be a bearish move for the Dow Jones. And from there, we could be headed to 25,400. But let's say we have a green day tomorrow. We run up to 26,200 and then we end up breaking that level. That's going to be a huge bullish move in terms of the Dow Jones. So keep an eye on those levels, guys. Super, super important but at the close of the day not too much movement here not too much movement and we might as well look at the five day five minute very quickly to see what I'm um, seeing here and just like the SPX guys we opened up, we gapped up, popped up to a new high, and then sold off to yesterday's support level, which is leading me to uh, you know think 
This could be a consolidation zone for a couple of days before we pump up or pump down in terms of the Dow and the S&P. And the Nasdaq's very similar here, guys, right? We noticed yesterday, actually, no, this was not yesterday. We noticed we're actually holding the 73.75 level right now as a new support, which we've been talking about over the past couple of videos, right? Notice how we ended up breaking that resistance today at about 73.75, the resistance we've been talking about. And notice how we're maintaining that level at the close of the market as a new support. And we see the next resistance here, as I talked about in yesterday's video, is at around $7,410. And if we notice on the one day, one minute, we cracked that a little bit today, but then we ended up getting rejected, sold off very aggressively from there but the good thing is again we're maintaining that old resistance as a new support and it's looking like we're trading between this little you know 30 to 40 to 50 point uh, horizontal channel here in terms of the Nasdaq so as of now guys you know Let's just take a look and see how far off we are from all-time highs. So in terms of the NASDAQ right now, we're about 4% off from all-time highs. The Dow Jones, let's see how far we are right now, roughly from where we are right now up to about 27,000. We're about 4% off in terms of the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the SPX, the S&P 500. We're about... 3.4% off. So between the three major indices we talk about on this channel, the SPX, the NASDAQ, the Dow, we're between 3 and 4% off from all-time highs, which is just absolutely crazy, guys. If you were to tell me this two, three months ago that in the matter of two, three months into 2019, we're going to rebound this aggressively, this quickly, I wouldn't have believed you, but 2019 so far, guys, and the stock market has been absolutely unreal. So let's talk about now what I ended up trading today and the two stocks that I'm swing trading here really in the rest of the month of March and for the rest, not really the rest of April, but into the month of April is when I'm planning on holding these stocks into at least. So the first one today, guys, is Activision Blizzard, ticker symbol ATVI. And this is one that I actually ended up calling out earlier this morning, and it ended up running all day until we saw the peak here at about $47.30. And during this whole time, guys, I was actually actively watching Activision Blizzard. I was moving up my stop loss. And then when I left my computer, I actually set a very tight stop loss as it did get closer and closer to this uh, high level as it kept climbing and climbing. I knew eventually we were going to pull back. I knew eventually we were going to pull back, which is why I put a very tight stop loss in so I could lock in my profits. And that's exactly what I ended up doing here on this trade, guys. But just to jump in to where I actually got in, I got in originally this morning on the pullback from 46.30 all the way down to about 45.41. Uh, that opened up a 2% margin of profit, and I actually ended up building my position um, in ATV at about $45.66 as it confirmed the bounce here at the higher low from the previous. That's a good sign that we're starting to reverse to the upside. And then I got in again at about $45.66. Excuse me. And I was actually actively watching the, the stock up, really up until this point. Once it cracked $47, this is roughly when I left my computer, had to do some other work. And that's when I put a very, very tight stop loss on it. Because again, or rather a trailing stop loss. Because again, we all know that whenever a stock runs up, most of the time it does experience a little sell-off. People take their profits later on in the day. Sometimes it runs up the entire day, but obviously something like this occurs more times than not, right? We notice here, you know, once we top the $47, we started to see a little bit of a flat line, right? We started to flat at about $47. Then we saw that aggressive sell-off. And at this point, I believe my 0.2.3% stop loss that was set very, very tight again because I wanted to protect those, uh, those uh, um, what's it called, the profits, guys, from 45.66. I ended up taking my profits, I believe, it was at around like $47 or something like that where my order ended up filling. And we can see here from about 45.66 where I ended up getting into the position. That that ended up being nearly a 3% profit 
in terms of this day trade. And for all you guys that watch me know that I'm typically taking between 1% to 1.5% to 2% on my day trades and nearly 3% on this one trade is pretty, pretty good uh, in my book with my more conservative um, strategy here. And this actually leads me exactly to what I want to talk about next in terms of two stocks that I'm looking to swing trade and one that I'm already in, which is at V guys, ticker symbol AT. V E and I actually got in to at V as we ended up pulling back here after I took my profits on the day trade. I ended up adding a little position here at about forty six dollars and twenty four cents. We pulled back about a dollar from that peak, opening up another two percent margin, and I actually just ended up adding a position there. So let me just quickly go over now why I am looking to swing trade uh, ATVI Activision. Blizzard and notice this is a stock that's been absolutely hammered right the video game stocks in general you know the three big ones that we know are ticker symbol ATVI EA and then TTWO take two interactive software these all have been getting slammed over the past couple of months and they're honestly looking to rebound at this point well not really TTWO but at V is looking to rebound and let me explain to you what I'm seeing here in terms of the stock which has led me to add an initial position into it as a swing trade so we notice here like I said we've been getting beaten right from $84 down to $39.60 this stock has lost more than half of its value, more than half of its value. And remember, guys, whenever stocks, they get beaten, 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 they get hammered, hammered, hammered down, you know, this is the time to look at them as potential buy-in points. A lot of people get scared when stocks run down like this, but... That is where a lot of money can be made if there is a clear-cut reversal to the upside in the technicals, right? And me personally, I don't think at V is going to drop much lower than where we are right now in terms of $40. It could potentially drop much lower. I, I don't have, you know, the future in front of me. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. But if we look on a longer term chart here, the three year one week, we're actually holding a level of support from back in 2016, roughly at the same price where we bounced, right? Roughly at about 36, not 36, more like 38 to $40 here in terms of at stock so this is looking like it's reversing to the upside on the longer term chart and on the 180 chart guys notice we're breaking out of the 180 sma resistance which has been a resistance over the past couple of months and also the 50 day resistance here the 50 sma resistance rather and we notice we straw we saw a strong support at this 40 dollar level ish like i said uh you know like i just showed you guys on the longer term chart that was support from a couple of years ago and now we're breaking out of this level we're uptrending nicely over the past couple of days and and I think it's wise right now for me to build a position in ATV, especially because we also broke above this resistance from the past couple of uh, weeks here back in the middle of February as well, which was the $45 resistance. And guys, the next price target I do have on ATV to add more money to it is going to be at around $48. So if we successfully continue to push up here out of $48, that's going to be where I want to add more into ATV. And from there, the next spot, is going to be at around $51 per share. So as of right now, I'm seeing a lot of potential in this reversal push to the upside in terms of at V. Could we end up selling off from here? Sure we could, guys. Sure we could. The RSI is pointing to a little bit uh, you know, of overbought state right here, which is why I only add <clears throat> an initial position in before every single swing trade, right? I don't like to put in a ton of money at first, just in case the stock doesn't go my way. I lose less money that way <clears throat> than if I were to add a ton of money right off the bat, right? So that's what I'm looking at in terms of at V. This is one that I'm already in and I plan to add more as we continue to push up here and break resistance levels as we pull back, open up better opportunities to add more money. That's what I'm going to end up doing here. <clears throat> 
uh, you know, in terms of at V stock. And this is one that I'm going to be, of course, updating you guys about in every single video, which leads me to the next stock I'm looking to add money into now, which is NVIDIA, guys. Ticker symbol NVDA. And today we broke a very, very critical resistance in terms of NVIDIA stock, which was at about $172, roughly, right? We noticed back in the beginning of December, we were just at that level at about $172. And I was talking about in yesterday's video and the morning video today that if we were to break 175 or 172 rather, pull back a bit, maintain it as a new support, that's going to be a good entry in my personal opinion. Again, do your own research to hop into NVIDIA and ride it up to at least the next resistance at about $185, which at that point, from 175 up to 185, that offers about a 5% margin of profit on NVIDIA. If we were to time it out perfectly and exit at about 185 with an entry point at around 173 to 174. So the two stocks I'm looking to swing trade here, one I'm already in and NVIDIA, I'm actually looking to take a position in very soon here are a ATVI, Activision, Blizzard, and obviously NVIDIA, guys. So let's talk about some other stocks very quickly and ETFs before I do end off this video. Starting off here with Facebook, ticker symbol FB. We actually did end up seeing a nice move in Facebook this morning, which we saw the pop from 161 on the support up to about 163, almost 164. And now we're pulling back and retesting that same morning support at about 161 into the aftermarket hours here. So I think Facebook, guys, with the pump this morning, I think that solidified this support and it solidified that this stock wants to move up more. Sure, it could end up breaking this uh, support tomorrow, which would have completely scrapped this plan here. But if we do end up pushing up more tomorrow, we do solidify that support into the pre-market hours tomorrow at about 161, 162. We start to climb back up into the 163 level. I think this could be a very good play. <clears throat> You know, back up to the mid 160s, 166, 167, up to the next resistance, which at this point is about $10 away at about 170 to 171. So, Facebook guys, take a look at that one. Make sure you keep an eye on it to see where we're ending up, uh, you know, where we end up heading in this one. It could be up tomorrow. It really could be up. Another one I want to talk about today, which is actually in a wedge pattern right now, is CGC Canopy Growth Company. And why I want to talk about this one guys is because this is a breakout pattern looking to form either it's going to pop here to the upside break the resistance portion of this wedge which is going to be a huge bullish pattern or we're going to end up breaking the uh, support here which would be a bearish pattern and from that point we could be headed to the next support, which in this case is going to be around 43 to 44 ish dollars. And from there, if we break that, it's going to be around 43.30. And you guys get the idea, right? From there, it's going to be around $42 if we continue to push down from the potential break of the support. But again, if we break to the upside, the profit, or the, not the profit, the target here to profit on would be from around 46 up to 48. The next one would be at around 49 and from there up to about $51 per share. So CGC, Canopy Growth, very interesting here in the next coming days in my personal opinion. Uh, UWT today, guys, not much movement in terms of this ETF. I covered it in my morning video, talked about how I wanted to see a pullback in it before taking a position. We saw the pop up to 1785. We started to pull back in the morning, which is what led me to say I want to see a pullback before getting in potentially to the low 17s, the 1730 level. I believe that's what I said in this morning's video. And we actually ended up getting that pullback. So if we look here on the 20 day one hour, we're maintaining Maintaining that 50 SMA support very nicely. So if crude oil ends up pushing tomorrow higher to touch to touch that 60 to 61 dollar level, I think this could be a good trade for tomorrow. And let's just take a look very quickly at crude oil. The crude oil futures here they actually almost touched 60 dollars today, but we saw that pullback, like I said which led UWT to pull back. So this, if it continues the uptrend off the 50 SMA support, 
This is going to be a good play tomorrow for sure, guys, unless it already moves overnight. Sometimes you miss the move if it does occur, you know, overnight because these futures are open, as you can see. You know, look at the time up there, guys. 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., throughout the night, these do move. So there is a, a chance that we do miss that move. But just keeping it out there, guys, uh, just keeping an eye on it, very, very important in my personal opinion. Another one I talked about this morning was natural gas. It's looking like we did end up getting rejected by the 290 resistance, and now we're forming lower highs, and it's looking like we're in the process of making a lower low here if we do end up breaking the 285 support. So this is a good sign that DGAS is going to be in play over these next couple of days as long as this trend that I'm showing you right here stays intact. And DGAS is the bear ETF, meaning whenever it's going up in price, that means natural gas is selling off, right? So we can see DGAS is at a support now at about $86 to $87. And we do have some margin of profit here to be made up to about $95 per share, which is about 7%. And up to the next resistance is about 10%. So about 7 to 10% in terms of DGAS, there's margin there. I'm watching this one for tomorrow for a day trade. Definitely, definitely it's on the watch list. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to end up wrapping it up right here. I hope you did find value in the breakdowns and the stocks that I'm calling out. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well if you're new to the channel. And if you want to drop a comment, let me know how your day went, your investing day, your trading day. I would love to know as well. Thank you all for supporting and watching the channel. And of course, if you're part of the Discord, thank you for being a part of it. If you're part of the Facebook, thank you to, for being a part of that. It means a lot, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video. Take it easy. Peace out.